Foxtrot after departure be clear left turn heading 200. Restrict climb initially to flight level 240. 8am. A Nimrod aircraft of 201 squadron is preparing to take off for a nine hour sortie. Three Foxtrot, you're now clear. Take off. The surface wind is 350, less than five knots, and the cable is up. Nimrod was the name of a mighty hunter. And Nimrod is just that, a hunter of submarines, the most advanced and complex maritime aircraft in the world. Nimrod carries a formidable array of electronic equipment, for its task is to locate, and in war to destroy, hostile submarines in the depths of the sea. Beneath the surface of these North Atlantic waters, Russian submarines continually patrol, many of them very close to our own shores. Their activities are peaceful enough now, but in time of war, they would be a very real danger. It is essential that in peacetime, the activities of these potentially hostile submarines are known and charted, so that should war ever break out, they can be tracked down and destroyed. Nimrod is continually rehearsing for this possibility, training men and perfecting equipment in constant daily contact with our potential enemies, both surface and submarine. Nimrod sorties are tasked from the HQ of 18 Group at Northwood, outside London, an important link in NATO's defence system. In the control room, RAF and Navy personnel work side by side. We've had reports of uh, diesel activity heading southwest of the north of the Shetlands in this general area here. I think they're well 30 a.m. and information has come through RAF intelligence about the movements of a Russian submarine north of Shetland. And he's got a short distance to go, we can just move his area up into this area to the north of the Shetland. Yeah, I think that was... The area in which the submarine is thought to be operating is blown up on the VDU, so that the situation can be analysed in greater detail. Well, I, I agree, we must go look at it, we've got an aircraft in the area. How about the Navy, do you have any...? Well, we've got something coming out, a ship coming out of um, Ross Heights about quarter an hour's time. We've had an intelligence report that uh, there's some submarine activity to the north of the Shetlands. Uh, we'd like 432 task to that area and we'll send you a confirmatory signal. The confirmatory signal is transmitted directly to the control point of the Nimrod operation, Petrivi Castle in Scotland. It is here that Nimrod missions are planned and coordinated. And, as at Northwood, the RAF works in close cooperation with the Royal Navy. The markers on the map show the positions of potentially hostile surface and submarine vessels, and of patrols originating from the two Nimrod bases, St Morgan in the south and Kinloss in the north. And this is the vast and lonely patrol area, the North Atlantic, as far east as Arctic Russia, as far west as Greenland and the seaboard of Canada. But submarine hunting is only one of Nimrod's tasks, and many sorties take in more peaceful operations. Because Nimrod is constantly patrolling the seas, it has been given an important role in fishery protection and supervision. Since the position of some 150 fishing vessels can be charted and photographed in a single flight, Nimrod tapestry sorties build up a picture of legal and illegal fishing, invaluable to the EEC. 
Oil and gas rigs and their pipeline systems also benefit from Nimrod surveillance. They too lie conveniently within the submarine patrol area and need to be under constant observation since they are vulnerable both to weather and to potential terrorist activity. Nimrod's other major responsibility is search and rescue. There is always a Nimrod on 24 hour standby for vessels in distress. All these activities are coordinated and directed from Petrivi Castle. Constant communication is maintained with all Nimrods in flight. Nine a.m. and the signal changing our Nimrod's area of patrol is passed directly to the aircraft in an encoded teleprinter message. And this is passed on to the captain. We are accustomed to thinking of the captain as the man who flies the aircraft. But in this case, the captain is an air electronics officer whose position is in the center of the aircraft. A uh, crew captain, no, we've had an area change. Our pilots will probably have to go to some medium level. Yes, you'll have to work out some new range. The target is for a Soviet diesel submarine. Nimrod carries two pilots. I was doing a two-year postgraduate course at um, the School of Oriental and African Studies at London University, which gave me the opportunity to join the Air Squadron in London. So I applied and managed to get into the Air Squadron and started flying. I'd never had any real ambition to fly, but once I started flying, I found it um, challenging and um, began to think then in terms of a career in the, uh, in the Air Force. I like the, the comradeship of the multi-crew aircraft and the size of the maritime squadrons means that there are more people and more friends to make. Um, the social side of the Air Force, the actual mess life is, is pretty good at Kinloss. 201 Squadron is based on RAF Kinloss on the northeast coast of Scotland, one of the most northerly flying stations in the British Isles. The station badge has a motto, power to the hunter, and RAF Kinloss exists for just that purpose, to give power to the mighty hunter Nimrod. For while our particular Nimrod is searching for submarines in the grey northern waters, other aircraft are being stripped down and reserviced by engineering wing maintenance. An aircraft as complex as Nimrod, in which every electronic device must function perfectly, needs specialised and skilled servicing and it needs a computer to analyse all the detailed individual tasks. And an engineering officer trained to understand the findings of the computer and to coordinate all the many skills and trades involved in carrying out the maintenance of the aircraft. It's a job which demands not only knowledge of engineering, but understanding of human beings as well. So I'm really looking after the chaps, looking after their welfare, but also making sure in a supervisory capacity that they are doing the job right and if there's any guidance that they particularly want, then I'm the guy who's there to look after them. In engineering, uh, certainly aircraft engineering in the RAF, you're talking about with the aircraft manufacturers, British Aerospace, the sub-assembly manufacturers. In my particular job, I've had to liaise quite a bit with civilian contractors and the hangars that we're working in. But in addition to long-term maintenance, at Nimrod Line Squadron, the aircraft are given a thorough basic service on return from each individual sortie. Aircraft 48, the IFF uh, TR has been removed. Uh, number 1, 2, 3 and 4 engines, the bleed valves are still stiff. Hi, Mr. Line flaps in this bit. Our prime responsibility is flight safety. Yeah. In so doing, you can't take really enough care in dealing with the aircraft and ensuring that they are fit to fly. Um, to try and impress this upon the tradesmen and also to ensure that you have correct levels of supervision and the trust of your tradesmen below you. The Air Force enables you to take on, for example, a fleet of the number of aircraft we have here at Kinloss with a team of 70 people below you, relying on your decisions. And uh, it can be a very demanding job at times, and this is what appeals to me. So that we can look at limiting it. There's no reason why we shouldn't, because the roll channel is fully serviceable. And uh, you can disconnect the pitch channel with no real effect at all. Nine thirty. 
an hour and a half since takeoff. Nimrod has its own galley. A constant supply of hot food is vital on a nine hour sortie. Nimrod carries two navigators. They share the same console, but their roles are very different. The routine navigator's job is to plot the overall navigation of the aircraft to and from the search area. I was pretty mathematical uh, when I was at school. I liked the mathematics subjects and um, I liked something of interest. I enjoyed playing bridge and chess and things like that. Um, going along on the navigation side, you've got all of that. And particularly, I've fallen into a, a role now in maritime that's absolutely perfect. The tactical navigator doesn't really come into his own until Nimrod has arrived at the search area. His basic job is to detect the position of the submarine by dropping sonar boys around its estimated path. I applied to be in the Air Force when I was about 15, still at school. And uh, after my A-levels at school, went on a university uh, cadetship. And at the end of that, became a navigator. He was navigator training, straight onto the Nimrod. And uh, first tour out in Malta, it's very nice, two years there in the sun. And then Kinloss here on this tour. So the, the attraction of the Air Force was, shall we say, the ability to uh, do unusual things. And uh, the flying. Lovely flying. But submarines aren't the only threat to our security. There are Russian surface ships out in the North Atlantic too, many of them observation vessels. Nimrod carries special photographic equipment so that any suspicious looking ship can be detected and passed on to intelligence for identification. Ten o'clock and activity is beginning to build up on and around the Kinloss runway. Everything that moves on the airfield, from a contractor's van to a Nimrod, is the responsibility of air traffic control. That came from downstairs. Oh, I'll check and see if Fox... Call Scottish Direct on 324.4. decimal four. Did that come from Fast jets absolutely fascinate me. Um, I would love to fly them, but obviously I can't. So therefore, if I can work with them and become part of a team that helps them get off the ground and get back on the ground again, keep them flying in the air to do that job, then, as far as I'm concerned, I'm doing a worthwhile job. The admin wing is responsible for the men and women who live and work at Kinloss. This often means a lot of personal problems to sort out. Came and he started chatting to us. This is uh, an insurance salesman, wasn't oh, it? That's right, sir. But it's a long-term um, saving scheme. So, uh, you've got plans to, to buy a car? Well, the majority of uh, servicemen I'm thinking in terms of people who, who actually fly and who do frontline jobs directly associated with flying uh, on the engineering side, servicing aircraft, this sort of thing, vitally important jobs. And we want to be sure that uh, the people who are carrying out these jobs are not uh, uh, burdened, if you like, with things they're worrying about in their personal lives um, and therefore distracting them from the, the important job in hand, which concerns uh, operational requirements and, of course, flight safety and all this sort of thing. Right, if you'd like to fill in your details on that pattern, then when okay. you've done that, I'll give you the money to count. Everything and everybody has to be paid for. Right. Accounts, too, come under admin wing. I joined the RAF straight from school, um, not really knowing what I wanted to do, except that I wanted a job which would give me um, a lot of responsibility and the opportunity to travel, um, possibly abroad. You get the responsibility of a staff of your own at a young age. I was 18 when I joined. Um, and the very first station I went to, I was what we call the OCWRAF, and I had a responsibility for 150 airwomen, um, which is probably an awful lot more than an 18-year-old would get in a clerical or administrative type job outside of the services. 11 a.m. and Nimrod has reached the search area. Somewhere beneath the surface, there is a hostile submarine. The tactical navigator prepares to drop the first sonar boys. He plots their position on his VDU.
The responses from the sonar boys give an indication of where the submarine is. But it doesn't obligingly keep still until you've found it. It is moving beneath the water at high speed. And Nimrod has to circle the area again and again, dropping more sonar boys, each enabling the crew to establish more accurately the submarine's position. Nimrod slowly and steadily closes in on its prey. The captain's job is to assess the information passed from the sonar boys to the aircraft's computer system and to coordinate the attack. The team, like the Nimrod, cannot function without somebody needing overall command. Each area of the aircraft has its own expert, the pilot and the navigator. And as I'm the AEO, I also look after the aircraft's sensors and I direct the use of those. But as I am also the aircraft captain, then I retain overall command. And it is my responsibility to see that the crew operate in the most efficient manner. Because what we must remember at all times is that we are a fighting machine and we are trained for war. The submarine's position has now been exactly plotted. It's time to release the torpedoes. If they were at war, that would have been one enemy submarine the less. But this is only a peacetime exercise, and no torpedoes are actually dropped. The satisfaction lies in knowing that you could have destroyed the submarine if you'd had to. Nimrod's return journey and the course of the submarine it has been hunting are plotted at Petrivi. Okay, As Nimrod comes into its home area at Kinloss, responsibility for its safe landing is taken over by air traffic control. Alpha X-ray, you have been cleared to land the circuit, clear the cable up. Surface wind 270. My job involves bringing aircraft into the airfield safely. Um, controlling aircraft both when they're on the ground and in the air, in the vicinity of the airfield. Um, I get most fulfilment from the job when the weather's bad because that's when the pilots appreciate you most. It's not until the weather is bad that you realise what a responsible position you're in. In fact, because there are, what, 13 people in Nimrod and their lives are, can be in your hands. One mile from touchdown. Slightly right of centre line. Turn left, two degrees, setting two, six, four. An approaching decision height, advisory information follows. Half a mile from touchdown, on the centre line. Just slightly above the right path. A quarter of a mile from touchdown. On the centre line. Over radar touchdown. Radar service terminates, 5 alpha x-ray. But the cruise day isn't over yet. At the end of every flight, there is a full debriefing session with an intelligence officer, so that all information collected during the flight can be assessed and analysed. And while they are on their way to operations block, another Nimrod is taking off for an evening sortie. Every Friday night, the squadron meet for a drink, a chance to relax after a demanding week. But Nimrod's vigilance cannot be relaxed. It is a never-ending task. And while the rest of the squadron can unwind and enjoy a few beers and swap stories about the week's activities, one crew is flying out again over the North Atlantic, keeping a permanent watch on vessels whose movements and activities we need to know about for our own safety.